Hello, this is Kelly. Welcome to my Floss Tube channel, Animal Instinct. Today is Sunday, January the 19th, 2020, and I'm trying something a little bit different today. I'm going to try and do a stitch with me for the first time. It's a really awkward setup, so we'll just see how I go. I'm not sure how much stitching I'll get done, but happy to give it a try. I'm going to be um, answering the Christine tag today from Christine from Stitch All The Things. I'll put a link to her original video where she answered um, her questions um, in the description box below. And I figured since I'm doing a stitch with me to make it a decent length video rather than just saying yes or no, if I can think of a little anecdote to go with the questions, I'll just chat away while I'm stitching. So if this isn't for you, I understand. I'll be back next week with a regular update. Um, but let's give this a go. I'm going to be stitching on the Heartstring Sampler Ease, the Cat Sampler. This is the pattern. I wanted to find something where I didn't have to do much counting and that house was perfect. I'm stitching this on 40 count Newcastle linen um, in the Legacy colorway by Picture This Plus and I'm using the Cold Four flosses. They're really pretty colors. Today I'll be stitching exclusively with the Gentle Arts Old Red Paint. I'm stitching with one strand of floss over two strands of fabric. Before I start, I'll just mention uh, the state of my hands. It's probably not the ideal time to do a stitch with me where you're going to see my hands. Um, but just in case you see some scratches um, on them, I mentioned last video I've been working at the Koala Triage Centre here in Adelaide and I've continued to do that. Um, I'm back at work but I went in in the evenings last week and on Friday night I had a little altercation with a koala named Feisty. Feisty lived up to her name when it was time to go to bed from her, um, she was perched in a tree quite happy. Um, it was just a little tree set up thing we have indoors and it was time to, for her to go to bed. She didn't want to go to bed and she let me know. <laughs> so um, yeah, if you happen to see some kind of quite nasty scratches, it's okay. Um, they're all healing fine. I just wasn't quick enough. It's my own fault. Um, what else before I start? I think we can just get into it. Uh, we've had some beautiful rain here today in Adelaide. Uh, and so you probably hear the rainbow lorikeets are just so happy um, that they're nice and wet and you can definitely hear them chirping. <laughs> I hope that doesn't bother anyone. Now I just want to get the hang of stitching this way. This is a very unnatural position for my stitching. Uh, I'm sure there's an easy way to do it, but that's all right. We'll just give it a go. So the first question. Have you ever called into a radio station and why? I can't think of a time when I ever called into a radio station. I used to listen to the radio a lot more when I was younger, especially as a teenager. Uh, I loved my music, um, but I was always too shy to call in. About, oh, I don't, I can't remember now, maybe a year, year ago, maybe it was two, time flies. Um, I did actually get asked to uh, be interviewed on a radio station uh, at the ABC studios when I lived in Canberra and I was a bit reluctant. I was pretty nervous um, but I decided to just have a go and in I went. It was the day before I was flying to Alaska to volunteer uh, my veterinary services at the Iditarod Sled Dog Race and they had somehow heard that I was doing this, I'm still not entirely sure how, and had contacted me. Um, it was really intimidating to go and put the big headphones on and 
I was so scared. My voice was a bit shaky, especially to start with, but thankfully the journalist was lovely and um, put me at ease and we had a fun chat for about 45 minutes. Uh, quite a few people I knew tuned in for it and apparently, I don't know if it's still available on the internet, but it was afterwards. I was too uh, embarrassed. To, I didn't want to hear myself, so I've never listened to, to it. <laughs> Um, the journalist said she enjoyed the chat, so I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, not my preferred thing to do. What was an odd task or chore you were given as a child? Sorry, just checking that the lighting's okay. That's probably slightly better. Uh, I had a pretty normal childhood. I, I can't think of any any strange chores that my parents tasked me with. One thing does come to mind uh, when I was in year six in primary school, so I was 12, we had a bit of a strange teacher. She was new to the school. Mm. She gave us all sorts of different chores each day. <laughs> I had two. My first one was once she'd arrived, she would give me her car keys. I'd have to go open her car, which was a little Ford Capri convertible. So very um, fancy car back in, uh, back in, when was that, 1992. Uh, anyway, I'd open up the door and I'd have to pull out whatever she wanted in the class for that day. So it would be her handbag, maybe box, maybe bags, could have been anything, but she, uh, yeah, she didn't want to do that herself, not even her handbag. <laughs> and my second chore for her, like daily chore, was to make her a coffee. Uh, I'd have to go to the staff room where the students weren't allowed normally, but I had special permission. And I'd make her a coffee. I was not a coffee drinker at that stage. I didn't really know how to make one. Um, and she was, she was not a very popular teacher for many reasons. I was a very good girl and I wasn't the sort of student to do naughty things or get in trouble. I did get a small bit of satisfaction every day because there was a spice rack in the staff room and I'd just sprinkle something different in, just a tiny little taste of something different every day with her coffee and she didn't seem to notice. But it was always fun to see her take her first sip and wonder, will she taste this today? <laughs> uh, one of my friends had a really terrible... Uh, ch task chore every day looking back on it now I mean just it wouldn't fly these days so we'd come in after lunch and we'd all sit down on the ground around her she was on a chair she would take her shoes off and read us a story and my friend's job was to massage her feet <laughs> I mean Oh wow, I, yeah, we, we came out with a few sort of corkers like that years later and our parents just had no idea of the things she was, um, I guess how she was treating us. Anyway, I survived. <laughs> okay, next question. Do you remember any recurring dreams from your childhood? Yes, I do. I'm not sure how old I was when I first started having this dream, fairly young I would say, and I would have a dream regularly that a big male lion had escaped from the circus, this is back in the 80s, um, and he had made it to my grandparents' backyard, and I mean I can still picture the dream today, I had it that many times. We were kind of um, standing at their back door, shining a torch into the darkness. It was night and there was this big lion there just looking at us. And I think that the police were on their way. I had 
that dream so many times that one day when I was about 13, I mentioned it to my mum. I said, do you remember when that lion was in Nan and Pa's backyard? <laughs> and it was only then that I found out that that was actually a dream and hadn't, ha hadn't actually happened. <laughs> Uh, as an adult, I've had another recurring dream, and I know this is not uncommon. I uh, have exam nightmare dreams. <laughs> so I dream that I am, I have an exam, and I'm not prepared for it. And for me, that is, that is really frightening. <laughs> uh, I am, I prepare very well for my exams. So to go into one unprepared is just, oh. <laughs> um, When I first started having these, I it would be uh, maths or physics, like high school maths or physics. And then uh, once I was through vet school, so I had them, th I had them during university and then on into during my working life. Just move that a little bit. Uh, it merged into or morphed into equine medicine exams. So that was one of my least favourite subjects. <laughs> and I had them for, I would say, another eight years after I graduated and was working. Uh, and then I realised probably around ten years that I wasn't having those dreams anymore. Which was really interesting. I don't know why they stopped. Uh, but I have spoken to other people and uh, it's not, not uncommon. Oh, the holes are a bit hard to see at this angle. But we're doing okay. Okay, next. Can you curl your tongue? Yes, I can. It's a genetic trait. So either you can or you can't. And if you can't, you can't be taught how to do it. Uh, it's interesting, I don't know what advantage it gives you, if any, <laughs> being able to curl your tongue. <laughs> but there you go. Okay, next. What is something you have struggled with throughout your whole life? I would say... Uh, Self-confidence and believing in my own abilities. Um, yeah, it's something that's an ongoing battle with me. I, I am working on, on it all the time though. I thought that postgraduate study would be out of my reach in my mind. I thought it was for smart people and then <laughs> You know, looking back on it, I do have a veterinary degree, so there must be some degree of intelligence, but it's funny what your mind tells you. Um, and I, as I mentioned, like public speaking, that radio interview, <laughs> frightening. Um, but speaking in a crowd, in front of a crowd, um, I struggle with. And that's another reason I have uh, started my FlossTube channel, just to get a little bit more practice being comfortable in front of a camera. I know when I'm filming, I'm not really, there's no one watching, but I am constantly aware. I'm thinking of you all in your um, living rooms. Uh, yeah, taking note of what I'm saying. So thank you so much um, so far. Yeah, for all the subscribers and all the, the comments and the likes, it's, it's really um, very flattering and I'm really enjoying doing it. And I think it's also helping me on my own, with my own, um, you know, self-development, boosting my confidence. So thanks everyone. Okay. Can you parallel park? And can you drive a stick shift? I try to avoid parallel parking. <laughs> Yeah, as other people who've answered this tag have said, you had to do it to pass your driving test. Um, I can do it. I just, if there's another way, I'll probably choose that over a parallel park. Fine reverse parking. 
that's not a problem. Don't love parallel parking. Uh, stick shift, we call that a manual car in Australia, so manual as opposed to automatic. I have always, my own cars have always been automatics. And like many people um, here in Adelaide, I think they might have changed the rules since I learned to drive though. Um, we would learn, we would take our driving test in an automatic because it was easier to pass than a manual. And the license that we received would allow us to drive automatic or manual car. I have a feeling that may have changed and uh, you may have to specify one or the other now, not really sure. Um, when I was going through vet school, the first few years we had to spend most of our holidays on farms, getting familiar with being on a farm and handling animals. So it's kind of working as a farmhand, getting work experience. And one of the ones I went on, uh, it was my beef cattle farm prac. I just had this sneaking feeling that I might be expected to drive a ute. I don't know why I thought that. Um, but I just let them know when I arranged to come visit. I didn't know them at all. They were just, uh, they'd had vet students before and they were, they were on a list in the area that I wanted to go. <laughs> um, so when I contacted them, I did just let them know that I was, you know, really a city girl <laughs> with not a whole lot of farm experience and that I couldn't at that stage couldn't drive a manual but was willing to learn I might just end oh, I'll do one more um, so I just wanted to be upfront <laughs> so they didn't get their hopes up <laughs> uh, let me just turn now my Lowry is a little bit squeaky so if it screeches I'm so sorry it's not too bad uh, so when I got to this farm, they were so nice. It was just a young couple and they had a little two-year-old son. And basically turned up, took my stuff inside. The farmer took me out to the ute because he wanted me to learn to drive. He plonked his two-year-old son in the passenger seat. No seat belt. Uh, just standing up holding on and he handed me a VB so the Aussies for the for the non Aussies it's uh, a beer that I probably wouldn't normally choose to drink but um, that's okay and he just said go and teach yourself how to drive and familiarize yourself with where all the gates are on the property because um, we had to do quite a bit of mustering of cattle and so off I went, it was impossible to sip a beer and drive at the same time. I was not on any public roads. I was on, you know, their own private farm. <laughs> but that just shows you how laid back they were about the whole situation. Anyway, I taught myself um, how to change gears and use a clutch and had lots of fun. By the end of my fortnight with them, um, they kind of, uh, reluctantly agreed that I had um, I must have a bit of country in my heart somewhere because I had gotten up to speed pretty quickly and we had so much fun they were the husband and wife were on a horse each and I'd be backing up in the ute um, bringing all these uh, these naughty cows in for various um, treatments that they needed um, and I also did, until re fairly recently, have my own uh, motorbike. So you have to change gears on that. So I think that I could probably still drive a manual if I really had to uh, now, I reckon. Might be a bit <laughs> clunky. <laughs> I'm just gonna secure this. The, the lorikeets out there.
okay. How well do you react when the internet is slow or your computer acts up? <laughs> um, pretty patient person, really. Um, the way I see it is getting angry and frustrated is actually not going to achieve anything. You can't think clearly when you're angry. So it's best just to figure out what you need to do. Often um, that means getting a professional and uh, you know, it'll get, it'll improve eventually. I've just had a new uh, tablet provided at work last week and it's really great. It means I can work on the go now, but we cannot get the, the app that I need, the program I guess that I need actually to do the bulk of my job is just not loading on this, on this tablet. Um, it is frustrating, but there's nothing I can do about it. So I've just found some other work I can do offline and yeah, it'll get fixed or replaced. Something will, something will work out. I've had two instances where I've moved house and there's been delays getting my internet set up twice, twice. It has taken three months to get internet. <laughs> uh, the first time I did lose my call a bit on the phone, but I was required to ring, uh, I guess I could say the name, Telstra. Um, every night after work, I'd be on hold forever. I'd get a new person every night. I'd have to start over again and explain my situation. And I got quite fed up with it. Uh, then started asking for managers and then eventually I got given a direct line um, to it wasn't they weren't in the call center it was kind of like the I guess it was a much hot much further up the line um, than where I had been speaking but yeah three months to get internet that's really that is frustrating even got me annoyed <laughs> um, but generally I mean, it's technology. Technology's not perfect. Um, there's no point getting angry. What's next? Have you ever sent a meal back to a, a restaurant? I did think hard about this one. Um, I don't think I have. I'm not really that kind of person. Again, the whole confidence thing, I just can't imagine ever sending something back. Um, it did remind me of a time in India though, and it's kind of a, well, it's kind of a funny story looking back on it. It wasn't funny at the time. Um, so I thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> may as well, what are we at, 23? Yeah, may as well, there's only a few more. Um, so, I'll set the scene because there's a bit of a story before we get to the restaurant. I was in India in a place called Jaisalmer, which is in the state of Rajasthan. And Rajasthan is kind of in the northwest of India in the desert. Um, and the reason you go to Jaisalmer is to visit the historic forts, which are just incredible and also um, to go on a camel safari in the sand dunes. So I was there with my partner, John. This is, gosh, this is a long time ago now. This is about 10 years ago now. And John liked a bargain. John also wouldn't have had any concerns sending a meal back. <laughs> um, but by that stage, because we met in India, he's, he's English, um, but he was, we just met as travellers in India. Um, and we'd probably been travelling together for about two months, I would say. And we had a bit of a routine. Um, he was on a motorbike. Um, and at that stage, I was still taking public transport everywhere. 
so he would ride ahead and then he he had no problem in just turning up um, and looking at a whole heap of different guest houses and kind of finding the best room the best deal if it was just me on my own I am not that patient I just want to find a room but anyway he um, he'd found this guest house I'd arrived on the train we'd gone um, out for a, a wander and while we're wandering, we're looking for a good deal for the camel safari. Um, we, we went around asking, we finally ended up back at our guest house um, and they offered us what we thought was the best deal. We paid a little bit extra to be taken to uh, some absolutely stunning sand dunes a little bit further out than normal. Um, John was a former military photographer and was always looking for the best shot. Um, so we arranged this safari. It was one night out that you sleep in sand dunes. Oops, hang on. I normally do my crosses in this thread one at a time. Uh, so yes, we had um, sort of two days and one night out in the sand dunes. Um, what am I going to do here? Sorry. Go down from here. And so we got driven out. Um, and so it was supposed to be 42 Ks um, from town, these beautiful sand dunes that we paid a little bit extra for. We were a little bit suspicious. Uh, when we were dropped off because it seemed um, it seemed that we hadn't actually gone too far from town at all and we thought oh well maybe the camels will take us further out we saw the camels so we had a like a camel man a guide and the two camels one was called Michael Jackson I can't remember what the other one was called <laughs> silly names they were a bit scrawny they seemed to be carrying a lot of stuff and we felt a bit um, a bit guilty because they were supposed to carry us as well they also weren't padded really well so it, it made for quite an uncomfortable ride we ended up sort of getting off and walking for big chunks of it <laughs> because um, it really was not comfortable anyway we, we'd been going for a good few hours it was a really hot day I do remember that um, it was fun, sort of alternating walking uh, walking and riding. And then the camel man said, oh, this, this, this is where we will camp. And the sand dunes there, whoops, can't see. <laughs> sand dunes there were not very attractive at all. And we said, hang on, hang on, hang on. This, And we knew the name of the ones we were supposed to be going to. I can't remember what they were. And we said, this isn't the such and such sand dunes. And he said, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, they're, they're just a little bit further. So off we went a little bit further. <laughs> um, and he said, this is the sand dunes. And we still, they were nicer. When I say nicer, um, a lot of them had just like vegetation growing on them. They didn't make for that beautiful, you know, desert shot of just sand and sky. That's really what we wanted. Um, and but it was too late by then so we were we were both a bit annoyed um, it was too late to do anything uh, we didn't have mobile phones or anything like that we couldn't like ring anyone we were basically just um, this guy we needed to do whatever he said because he knew where we were we had no idea where we were <laughs> anyway we were able to frame uh, some pictures carefully so that it looked like the nice sand dunes. <laughs> if I can slot in a photo, I'll, I'll see if I can find one, I'll pop it in here. Um, it was all a bit strange. He left us in the middle of the night um, to go party in a local village. He also tried to set up his tent um, or his bed right next to me, which I felt extremely uncomfortable about. All in all, it was just it wasn't what we were hoping for and you know we'd been traveling for a while both of us independently before we met each other and we were really annoyed that we had fallen victim to a bit of a scam because we, we were always on the lookout for that kind of thing 
Anyway, next day, packed up, um, tried to ride the camels back. It was still uncomfortable. John was complaining that it was really uncomfortable. And I was kind of thinking, oh, come on, toughen up. Um, but we got back and he, he did, was complaining that he was in agony. We got back to the guest house. He wanted to go and confront the manager because um, there were a lot of things that weren't um, done as we expected. And um, it just happened when we turned up, there was a whole lot of fresh arrivals from the train, just wandering to, um, up and down the street, looking for somewhere to stay because there were a lot of guest houses in that area. So John took upon himself to warn everyone away from this guest house. Or if they, you know, if you do decide to stay here, do not go on one of their safaris. And that's their bread and butter. So they don't want people saying that. <laughs> they don't want people scaring people off. The manager wouldn't take him seriously. And John was just getting more and more frustrated. And I mean, we were both tired. We hadn't slept very well either. And in the end, he, <laughs> on the street outside the guest house, he pulled his pants down and showed everyone his bum, <laughs> which, oh my gosh, was a sight. It had been rubbed red raw. And he, he was sort of ranting, going, this is what happens if you go with them. They give you these poor scrawny camels, inferior um, padding on them, and look what's happened. And we were quickly ushered into the manager's office at that stage. <laughs> um, and when we explained exactly what had happened, um, he actually did agree that that is not how we should have, um, how the trip should have gone. We didn't go to the right sand dunes. That's the main thing, um, plus all the other stuff. And so he actually gave us a full refund. That's how bad it was. <laughs> um, as well as a refund, he gave us a free night's accommodation. He was, I think he was just really worried that we were going to give them a bad review. And he said, you can have a free meal in our restaurant, um, anything you like. Tonight, your dinner is free. And so we freshened up, went up to the, this rooftop restaurant, which was, you know, quite nice, quite pretty, um, overlooking the city. Uh, there were a few, yeah, it was fairly busy, I guess. We had a look at the menu and there was only one meat option on the menu uh, and it was chicken. I can't really remember what the chicken was, but it was chicken. Um, and we were kind of both feeling a little bit spiteful, I will admit, um, because the chicken was the most expensive item on the menu. So of course we both ordered it and the waiter went away. He came back and he said, I'm very sorry, chicken is not in your deal. <laughs> well, you can imagine John's um, ire at this. <laughs> anyway, we said, no, no, no. We were told we could have anything on the menu. I'm just also just checking the um, pattern here quickly. We were told we could have anything on the menu. And so the waiter reluctantly agreed, oh, yes, that's right. You you can have anything on the menu. Okay, you can have the chicken. And then he came back just a few minutes later and he said, I'm very sorry. There's no chicken left. <laughs> well, at this point, we'd had enough. And I guess the other people in the restaurant could see that there was a little bit of a scene being made. <laughs> this is mainly my, this is mainly John, by the way. This is not my style at all, but I fully supported him in this, on this occasion. And a journalist came over. Oh, whoops. Is that right? Nope. A journalist came over introduced himself, said, oh, is, is something wrong? Um, I am such and such and I write for some local paper. And we explained what had happened. He spoke to the waiter. And what do you know? Not too long later, 
we had our chicken. We were both too afraid to eat the chicken. Whoops, again, I keep forgetting. <laughs> I'm not in camera. Um, because we just did not trust that, you know, something wasn't done to it. I don't think we really ate much of it at all. Um, so we didn't send our meal back as such. <laughs> but yeah, what a what a night, what a memory. I actually found my journals from that trip. I took really detailed journals um, just recently and I read my, my account of that night and it's, it just had me in stitches. Uh, his bottom, I've never seen anything like it. It was it was horrendous and for the poor guy, he had to get back on his motorbike the next day because we were going to our next destination. <laughs> so, not fun. Okay, I need another piece of floss. I think we're almost there now. Um, it's 30 minutes until dinner time and you haven't planned anything to make. What do you do? Uh, I've always usually got some leftovers in the freezer, so it's no big deal. Um, or I've usually got, you know, salad stuff in the fridge plus protein of some sort, chicken or fish. So no big deal. I don't tend to do a lot of cooking during the week. I um I like to do prep on the on the weekend and then um then my nights are free to stitch. <laughs> okay. There's two more. Is there a word you've always pronounced incorrectly but didn't realize it until later in life? Uh, I think a few people have mentioned um how when you read a lot as a child you don't necessarily realize uh, or understand the correct pronunciation of words and that happened to me a lot too um the one that's that stands out was the the girl's name penelope i thought it was um penelope uh, I think she must have been, that must have been a name used in Enid, Enid Blyton books. Um, Penelope. Penelope. <laughs> and uh, yeah, never leave that down. Penelope. The other thing that I did was, I don't know why I thought the Bangles song walk like an Egyptian, even though I'm fairly sure I would have seen the video clip, I thought that was McClarkle addiction. There was a toothpaste. I don't think it was quite called McClarkle, but it was something like that. McLean's maybe? McClarkle? And I thought it was kind of a song about <laughs> um, being addicted to toothpaste. <laughs> and uh, uh, my one of my cousins recorded it onto a cassette for me and labelled it McClarkle Addiction. <laughs> um, okay, lucky last. What is your social media pet peeve? Oh, I don't love social media. I kind of feel, sometimes I feel like I was born in the wrong generation. Um... I like Instagram because there's not like so much chatting and discussions where things can go wrong, but I just, I really hate how people are so mean and it's often, you know, I'm sure these people wouldn't, wouldn't say these things to, to, you know, the person, person's face if they, if they were talking to them in real life, person to person, but the keyboard warriors, um, and the meanness, um, I, I hate it. I just, it's not necessary. There's enough, you know, awful things that happen in life to, you know, you don't want to have to deal with, with that as well. Um, there's a lot of online bullying and harassment that I just, I just don't understand um, why people, what people get out of, of doing it. Um, yeah, so that would be my social media pet peeve.
I think that's everything. Thank you so much, Christine, for um, coming up with those questions. They were they were just a bit different, and I thought, oh, that's probably perfect to go with a stitch with me if I can figure out my setup, which I think I have figured out now. Hopefully, it's not too wonky. Uh, let me know what you thought of this video. Very much open to feedback. Um, and once I sort of figured out I'm sitting awkwardly, but once I got stitching, it's been quite good. So I might leave it there. And I hope you all have a good week. I will hopefully be back next weekend. Actually thinking about it, I have, I'm finally, um, I'm finally available to do a 24 hours of cross stitch when it's, when the actual events on. So I might incorporate that into my update. Um, I might try and film as I go, maybe just for fun. Um, we'll see, we'll see. So yeah, I'll be back one way or another in next weekend. So have a great week and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye.